Okay, now we're going to talk about this last section and the system controller. Uh, we're not going to talk about uh, the foot pedals at all because I don't have any foot pedals. Uh, basically, the foot pedals are just modulation sources. They're just sources of control voltage that if you plugged into the back, you could direct to various destinations in order to modulate them with your foot, which is awesome. But I don't have a CV foot pedal, so I can't do it. Anyway, um, okay, over here in this section here, we're going to be talking about these functions and some other functions in a minute. Um, first of all, you have a tuning knob. So you can tune to other synthesizers or whatever. So that's pretty cool. Also, you know, <laughs> there are 18 oscillators in here and they're gonna drift because they're VCOs. You need some way to force all 18 of those oscillators into appropriate tuning and the answer is the simple little button, auto-tune. You, you press it and then it'll in a mere 25 minutes, it will have, to, I'm just joking, uh, in under five seconds, it will have tuned all eight oscillators. In fact, let us, actually these are pretty, these are pretty much in tune, but let's do it anyway. We'll just engage auto-tune. We just wait a few seconds and it'll tell us how many oscillators, how many layers of oscillators tuned. Six tuned. Only six of the oscillators work now. It's six layers of three oscillators tuned. So everything, all the voice cards are working and we're set. Now they're more in tune. I kind of like the cascading warmth of them not being as in tune, but they'll get there at some point. Okay, so next, let's talk about the mono button. Actually, we've already talked about the mono button. We know what that does. It triggers the monophonic mode. Then we have multiple trigger, which actually affects mono mode. Um... <laughs> Okay, so when we have this in monophonic mode, it's single trigger, which means as long as you hold one of the notes or the note before, as long as one note is held uh, while another note is triggered, you won't hear a second triggering. So it's like this. A lot of uh, monophonic synths work that way. Let's give it. makes it more evident. Okay, that's great. But maybe you're a person who wants it to trigger every single time a note is played. When you're in monophonic mode, you can cl click multiple trigger. And it uh, doesn't matter if you hold a note or not, uh, you will trigger the envelopes. So that's what multiple trigger does. K keyboard out is has to do with the ports on the back of the synthesizer that allow you to use voltage control and triggering to control a monophonic synthesizer. So if you want to shut off that control as it's happening, you can press the KB out and that will, you know, not control the monophonic synthesizer. Like if you just want that monophonic synthesizer to come in at certain points, you'd click the KB out and uh, turn it off or turn it on according to your uh, desires. We don't have one hooked up right now, so that's not gonna work. Uh, then down here we have the glide function. Uh, that gives us glide, we get polyphonic glide that we're hearing which basically means every time you press a note, one of the oscillators will have to play that note or one of the sets of oscillators. If it's on that note, you won't hear glide, but if it isn't on that note, you'll hear it glide to that note. In monophonic mode, it acts like you expect it. So 
So there you go. You have the ability to control the amount, or you can have the amount set and then be playing normally, and then kick it in. And turn it off, whoa. Next, we get down to keyboard mode. Keyboard mode, it's just a single button. It looks so unimportant, but the keyboard mode really is where you start engaging and using the system controller because what keyboard mode decides is how the notes you trigger are routed to the oscillator cards inside of the synthesizer. So when you're in polyphonic mode, you can decide a number of things. I'm just not gonna demonstrate them because to be honest, it would be a lot of repetition um, I'm just gonna tell you what, what you can decide if the notes you play are round robin, each new note activates a new card randomly, or you can have uh, a, a certain memory where if you're playing a chord over and over again, it will constantly assign the same cards to the same notes. So like you'll only get glide on the first time you play it, and then the rest of times you play it, it'll be staying. Um, there's other functionality like every time you hit a new note uh, uh, on its own, uh, it will always go back to the first oscillator and then the next notes will be assigned randomly. There's a number of ways you can route where the keys go, what oscillator each key goes to. And in monophonic mode, we've seen how uh, what that does. Monophonic mode, what we didn't see is that like you can decide note priority. You can have high note priority, low note priority, priority or last note priority, or you can do what we did show, which was assign how many layers of oscillators exist in your monophonic sound. Hold is an interesting thing. We're still in mono. So like uh, hold is where I would play an up to six note chord. Here we'll do. C major seven. Okay, so now that I've done that, every note I play will transpose that chord uh, in its entirety to the note I play. So that's a lot of fun. You can do a lot of cool things with that. I mean, turn the glide on. That's fun. And of course the arpeggiator, which goes at the speed of the modulation. And by using the system controller, you can set that to go up, down, up and down, all notes simultaneous, notes in the order that they were pressed, that sort of thing. I'm not gonna go into it, it operates the same way arpeggiators operate and there's a whole bunch of codes you have to know to access those functions. That's one of the things we haven't talked about a whole lot is there, there is functionality that's completely uh, digital that you access via the system controller and by entering in codes. Like for example, right now we are on C9 enter. If you press C then nine then enter, the knobs on the board define what's happening. It just plays whatever the knobs are set to. I've been using that so I haven't been using presets so that I could more directly uh, access each individual sound. Okay, and then pitch bend amount just sets how much uh, pitch bend you're gonna get. <laughs> So that's fun. And modulation amount, we've already messed with. It allows you to direct modulation to the synthesizer without using the mod wheel that is always on. Okay, now we're just gonna talk really quickly about the uh, envelope, these extra envelope buttons that affect how sounds occur with the envelope, which are pretty cool. Um, first, if you play a chord repeatedly, you don't re-trigger the envelope at zero every single time. It starts uh, somewhat into the envelope in multiple uh, iterations of your playing. If you want it to start at zero, you can press the return to zero button. And then each reiteration you get will take you back to zero. 
It's a subtle difference. You can hear the um, envelope punching there. Uh, next, we have unconditional contour, which is pretty cool. It will go through the attack and decay steps of the envelope uh, when you trigger it, irrespective of whether you hold it. So here's what would happen if um, I, I start to play a chord. Okay, that's me holding a chord. The minute I let go of that chord, no matter where it is, it's gonna immediately jump to the release part of the envelope, even if I just held it for that long. What unconditional contour does is it will force the sound through the attack uh, settings before it jumps to release, no matter when you let go of it. I turn on unconditional contour. And it will go through the entirety of the settings for attack before it goes to release. So again, let's do that one more time. I didn't hold it long enough to go through everything, but if I press unconditional contour, I can just press it and then go play something else somewhere else on another of my 80 keyboards. So that's pretty cool, actually. Uh, keyboard follow. I, it's one of those functions that I think were really suitable for people when they had a lot of different keyboards going on. You could hit that chord. It would play while you go and do something else. Okay, so keyboard follow. One of the things about uh, acoustic instruments is that the higher uh, you play on them, the shorter the envelope times are on the notes you play. Uh, on a synthesizer, uh, the times are the same, no matter where you are. But what keyboard follow does scales the envelope output time diminishes the envelope output time as you go up uh, in frequency or in note so the high notes are much shorter than the low notes so that allows you to emulate uh, like the behavior of electronic pianos and things So yeah, and then release is just what you'd expect if you have a, a song that you're playing and you want, you move back and forth between having a release and not having a release, this really helps because you don't have to turn the knob back and forth. So it's just these little functional things that make uh, use of this synthesizer easy for performers. Over here, of course, we have the master volume. We have programmable volume, which is the volume of a particular voice. If you want all of your voices to have the same amplitude as you're moving through them through uh, the presets, of course, there are 100 presets and you can save them full or use the ones that are there, whichever you like. Um, you want to be able to control the volume of the preset because the functionality may make a sound be louder than other functionality. Like for example, if you have a monophonic sound that has 18 oscillators in it, it's gonna be a little bit louder than a polyphonic sound with one oscillator in it. So you can use the programmable volume in the context of the patch to adjust volume so that you have even volumes across your set of presets. And then of course you have a headphone.